Paul the good news is that Jesus Christ died, he was buried, and rose again. And that's the gospel. Sometimes you will ask Christian, what is the gospel of the Bible? The gospel is the good news. What is the good news? That's the good news that we are sharing to people, the love of God to everyone. The love of Jesus. For evangelism to be effective, the Christian must recognize that God evangelizes is called to all Christians. We are all called to share. You may be sharing through your life testimony. You may be sharing through, probably through social media. Or probably through music. Or personal evangelism. In different ways, God calls us to be a real witness. We need witness in the day of Pentecost. If you will see, a lot of people got saved. A lot of people got saved. They meet together like every day. Sama-sama sila, lagi sila magkakasama. So let's read verse 13 in our text. Acts, please. Look at it in verse 13. Okay, I need, I need my reading last time. Okay, verse 13. He said, When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, all the ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that this man had been with Jesus. And also another another passage, also in verse, uh, verse 13. Okay? Uh, verse uh, Verse 20, I mean, and then verse 20. He says in verse 20, he said, For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. So for us, a winning witness, we must spend time with God. We must spend time with God. Because the principle of effective communication to the gospel is to spend time with God. Sometimes you can easily identify the person. For example, if Lobelia is very close to someone, if Lobelia loves eating, let's not like eating, just an example. You will say that the person that he always with her loves eating too. Okay? And if a person that you are always going to, they love, for example, sports or watching sports or, or, or doing now, I like fishing. You can easily identify. So a real way to spend time with God. So we know those and those, those disciples who always spend with God, you know. And we know who is God, who is Jesus, what He's doing. He prayed, He, he preached, He healed people, and He evangelized, He shared the salvation or the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or the gospel. Spend time with God is also prayer. So that's the principle. Of communication that has to spend time with Christ. And nowadays, Christ is not visual. And how we can spend time with Christ? Through the Word of God. Amen. Studying God's Word. And so important. Because in verse 7, he said, The community took note that this man had been with Jesus. That is in verse 20. And Peter informs. The religious leaders that he is simply speaking about things he had seen and heard. And these verses obviously refers to Apostle Peter. But the next reveals a simple yet powerful truth for all the believers to embrace. And then because we talk about those things that interest us, even grandparents talk about grandkids, some people talk about politics, other talks about sport, especially this morning. If you will see some, especially men in the church in a different corner, they are talking about Manny Pacquiao. All right? When the Raptors won the championship, wherever you go, you will see they are talking about the Raptors championship. But in here, the process, they are talking to each other 
about what Christ has done to Peter and the other disciples. That's the principle. Spend time with God. My heart was sudden just a couple of weeks ago. And, and the Holy Spirit reminded me about using a social media. He said in my heart, there was a mom who is so proud that sharing, like in, in, in her Facebook uh, Messenger, Facebook, for her two years old baby, showing how to use a selfie. He's so proud. Taking some, some mom out of me. And then I said, I think it, it's nice if the mom or the parents, they will show in their Facebook that their child singing like kids, a Christian kids songs. Or probably reciting Bible verses. Right? And nothing wrong about showing that uh, how to use the selfie. Uh, you know, using the cell phone for selfie. But I think it is very it is good like, to spend time also with our children, developing their spiritual walk with God, and then teaching them like the music or the gospel music, teaching them how to pray, basically. And so we have because when spending time to build our faith becomes a priority, the result will be speaking to others about Christ. When we spend time to build our faith. And the reason why the believers or a Christian, he cannot share his faith or he cannot share the gospel or the good news because our foundation is still weak. And we need to have a good foundation and to strengthen our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the first thing, spend time with God. Spend time with God. And, and, and if I, if probably if you will look yourself at the mirror, how I spend time with God? In the morning? In the evening? And how long do I spend time with God? Probably you enjoy spending time with your spouse or your friend. That is nice. But how about our spending time with God? Especially studying His Holy Word. That our mind and our heart was totally saturated by His Holy, Holy Word. And that's why we become like a willing witness if we will spend time regularly with the Lord. And we see Him here on Peter's life and the other disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. They were convinced. Look at now in verse 24. Please. Our text, verse 24. It says here in verse 24, when they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, You made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. That what they saw in the life of these disciples. And let's jump in verse 13. Look at in verse 13. Stress out your hand to heal and perform miraculously signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. You will see here in our next point, a witness not only tells what he, uh, 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 our, our person is here, not the, is not spend time with God. Also, a willing witness seek with conviction. Speak with conviction. Because through prayer, we identify with Christ's love for people. And through prayer, we destroy strongholds of the enemy. And through prayer, we receive the power to boldly share the gospel. Then we identify Christ's love for people. I remember that day when I committed myself to God into the ministry. It is because I identify the need of a lot of people who are lost, who are dying. So through prayer, we will seek with conviction. Can you imagine your co-worker 
You will see him every day. You see that person every day. And then in your heart, you have no conviction at all that to share the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's, let's pray that the Lord will give us a conviction that, that whoever person that we can talk to, it becomes like a normal lifestyle that we open our lips to share what Christ has done for our lives or what we have experienced. And also to pray, we destroy the stronghold of enemy. Sometimes the enemy is ourselves. They may, may, they may be rejected me. I will share the gospel. Let always renounce it by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? The promise, we will receive that power and we become boldly to share the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus. Seek with conviction 